Today we're reviewing the Gulo Composites GME 30 wheel set. I feel like hardtails are the perfect bikes to review wheels because I don't have any rear suspension masking what the wheel is doing. I've had these wheels for a long time and I put a lot of miles on them and I can't wait to tell you about them. They have some very, very unique attributes. They have carbon fiber spokes. That makes for a super light wheel. And they only have 24 spokes. Google has three mountain wheel sets with this same technology with these carbon fiber spokes. They have a 25i, a 27i, and a 30i. And this is the 30i. I like a 30i, 30 millimeter inner width of the rim. I like that for my tire profiles. Even though I'm only running two threes on this bike, I still love a 30i. When we were chatting, they said, which ones do you want? Do you want the XC ones, the trail ones, or the enduro ones? And when I looked up the weights, <laughs> I'm like, uh, enduro all the way because it's lighter than most XC wheels. This is 200 grams lighter than my bird spoke wheels. That's saying something. These came in an incredibly lightweight 1460 grams, incredibly light. And you feel that when you're riding. I'm going to talk about that more. And so these are like XC almost XC race weight with enduro durability and enduro width and size. So I'm really excited about that. They have their own proprietary hub. And today we're gonna to take it on the trail. I'm gonna talk about what these ride like. I've got my standard 22 PSI in the rear, 20 PSI in the front, and we're on my trusty spot rocker. I have a lot of miles on these Gula wheels and I'm excited to tell you all about them on the trail. Let's go. I've ridden a lot of carbon wheels on this channel and in my life. And not all carbon wheels are created equal, not by a long shot. Ride feel is super important to me. A really good wheel set is worth its weight in gold to me. It completely transforms a bike. A mediocre wheel set that's light is okay, but especially on a hardtail, if that wheel set is too stiff, it's just gonna make your hardtail ride super harsh. And these wheels have a great ride feel. They are not overly stiff. I'd rather save one pound at the wheels than five pounds on the frame. That rotational weight is really noticeable. This bike just rockets up climbs. What a great pairing with this bike. I really like these wheels. I've run them single speed, run them geared, run them on this kind of sprinty XC bike. Run them on my enduro bikes, even my full suspensions. They are great, great wheels. One thing I wish was better, especially for the price, is the hub engagement. So the engagement isn't bad. It's about like a DT350, but for a $2,400 wheel set, it should be better in my opinion. I want faster engagement. I don't need i9 Hydra, but one or two degrees would be nice. You know, i9 one to one's plenty, or like a DT350 with the 54 tooth ratchet. That's plenty for me. I just find myself half ratcheting every now and then, and there's a little more slop in it than I like. These wheels are more vertically compliant than light bicycle, than Knox, than Noble wheels. They are more vertically compliant than ICANs way more compliant than Santa Cruz reserve wheels. They're more compliant than 90% of the carbon wheels I've ridden. They're not quite as compliant as my Zip 30 motos that have those ankle compliance built in them. But these are a great, great carbon feel. They don't bounce me off track. And that weight cannot be overstated how important what a difference a light wheel set makes. The acceleration is just unreal when you get on the pedals. Lots of control. I don't feel them flexing sideways, despite the 24 spokes. They are not a wiggly, flexy wheel laterally. Lots of vert all at once here. On a hardtail, you can't really just let her rip because braking's really hard to do on steep, loose stuff. A 
that's the crux move there. And then there's one tricky move here in the middle of a turn. Boom, and we're down. Really composed on this 67 degree head angle trail XC bike. And these wheels feel great. I'm not fighting for traction, not fighting for grip. So I've probably got a thousand miles on this wheel set. And the only trouble I've had, I had one of the bearings go out on me. That's just a fluke. And Gulo was awesome to help me out and get some replacement bearings under warranty. Now these wheels have a lifetime warranty on them, which is awesome. That's the standard for carbon wheels now. And when you're spending over two grand for wheels, you need a lifetime warranty. I've not been easy on these wheels. Hardtail life is not good on the wheels, especially in Sedona. But I haven't had a single pinch flat or brutal rim strike where I felt like, uh oh, that rim's not gonna hold up. Look at all these beautiful Ocotillo plants with the orange flowers. I love nature and I love how my mountain bike gets me out in nature. I don't think I'd be a mountain biker if it was all man-made features. Nature's such a huge part of it for me. Is this worth double what a light bicycle wheel set is? Absolutely, in my opinion. I'd rather have um, like some Nuke Proof Horizon V2 wheels aluminum than a cheap carbon wheel set. I don't love cheap, stiff carbon wheels. But man, compliant, nice wheel sets are a thing of beauty. Oh, these wheels really wake up this already exciting bike. <laughs> oh, what a joy. Mountain biking is so much fun. Man, the acceleration of a light wheel set is unreal. Yeah, this is a world-class bike with these wheels. Unreal. So overly stiff wheels actually give you worse traction as well, just like overly inflated tires do. They bounce you offline instead of conform to the trail. Oh man, I've said it a lot on this channel and I'll say it again. Riding a bike to an inch of its capability is so much fun. I feel like if your bike's a lemon and you're juicing the lemon, you wanna get every last drop of juice out of this lemon. And this bike wants you to do that. And these wheels help me push it to get every little last drop of juice out of it. It's like the exact opposite of riding a Santa Cruz Mega Tower on a blue trail where you're just so overbiked, you're not really feeling the trail anyway. There's a time and a place for that. But man, I'll take 2% underbiked over 50% overbiked any day. Something to be said about being able to trust your wheels entirely. Both that they're not gonna flex on you sideways and that they're not gonna break on you when you're diving into rock gardens and I completely trust these wheels. Now, I'm not very hard on wheels. I'm not very hard on anything, really. I don't break wheels, I don't break spokes. The Hunt Trail Wides are pretty soft and I dent those rims quite a bit. But, man, I haven't pinch flatted in like two years. I'm pretty smooth on my bike, so I haven't tested these like a 300 pound football player would. But I completely trust these rims. Now I've ridden a lot of modern wheels, most of the modern wheels out there. And if you wanna pick my brain on how the different wheels compare and which ones I'd recommend for you and your riding style, I have a bike consultation service. I help people pick parts when building up a frame, or I make recommendations for the perfect hardtail or full suspension for them. 
you are interested in that service, I have a link to it in the description below. You pay for that service because it takes a lot of my time, but it's a good way to avoid spending a lot of money on the wrong product. And I don't care what product you get. I mean, I care, but it doesn't benefit me if you buy one over the other. So unlike your bike shop that sells one brand of wheels only, I'm not gonna recommend the brand I sell because I don't sell them. I'm gonna be impartial and let you know what I think would be a good fit for you. These wheels are an absolute treat. I love them. They're very expensive. And I know a lot of people love to complain about expensive things in the comments. There are people out there, and a lot of you view this channel, that this is your only outlet from work in life. That you work 60 plus hours a week and you earn a good income and you're okay to spend a little bit on your bike because that's what takes you out of reality and gets your mental health where it needs to be. And I get that. And if that's you and if you've got a good budget for your stuff, something like these Gula wheels would be magical. So compared to the Zip 3.0 motors, the Zip 3.0 motors are like 30% heavier. They're not light, quick wheels. They're just soft, heavy wheels. These are light and zippy and, and they're lighter than my atomic carbons with bird spokes by a significant amount. And you feel it when you're in a hard gear and you're just barely creeping along and you just mash those pedals, a light wheel set will just pick up so fast. And that makes for an exciting ride. I'd rather have really nice light supple wheels like these than electronic shifting or a wireless dropper. This makes so much more of a difference. I'd rather have these than Cane Creek E-Wings. I just think wheels are one of the best places to spend money once you have the frame that you want. And these Gulo composite wheels are absolutely beautiful. I highly recommend them. They're a little bit expensive. They don't have the world's best engagement, but the ride experience is fantastic. And that's what it's all about. Put away the spec sheet and just go ride it and see if it makes you smile. These wheels absolutely make me smile. I got a link to these in the description below if you wanna learn more about them. I just received about four different wheels in for review, so there's gonna be plenty more wheel reviews coming. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss those, and like this video if you learned something. Thanks for watching, everybody. There's a party in the mountains, and you're invited.